You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Ross K. from Ross K. Realty Consultants. Welcome to the show, Ross. Hi, Jim. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. We want to know if this investigation that's going to be held into so-called shadow flipping in B.C. is really worth the time and effort. After all, it is the real estate industry investigating the real estate industry. Well, it's the real estate industry uh, investigating the real estate industry, but it, they also have a, uh, a couple of lawyers on the panel this time around. So even though you're there's only one realtor on the panel, and uh, the, so the, the uh, real estate agent, the licensed uh, agent that's on the panel, has been in the business a very, very, very long time, All, which also means for somebody like that, they're not really uh, active in the business a whole lot. They don't sell a lot of real estate uh, today anyway. Um, so how out of touch they are with what's been going on on the ground uh, will be another story. And the fact that I believe this uh, that realtor has been uh, with several different real estate companies over her career. Um, you know, she's also been a member of organized real estate on the board of directors. So real estate, like a lot of uh, associations, there are people who are lifetimers on the boards and the uh, they like to move up to the ranks and uh, they're more um, they're more geared to that side of uh, the business than they are about the actual sales side of the business so Ross, this, could you maybe explain what shadow flipping is well shadow flipping is a, a is a is a term that was created I, I believe by the author of the article in Globe and Mail I uh, it's really an, another name that someone just came up with what this is is it's basically the legal practice of, of the assignment. What an assignment is, is that if you've got your house listed for sale and it sells, there's a contract or an offer to purchase that's done on the property. It's, it's called different things, agreement of purchase and sale, the contract, a whole bunch of different terms are, are used to describe the same thing. But the uh, contract, the actual contract with the original homeowner, uh, that is a piece of paper called an agreement of purchase and sale. The buyer who is, has purchased the home from the original owner has the ability in BC to sell that piece of paperwork to another uh, another buyer. Now, in, pra in practically speaking, it is virtually impossible for, a, for this to go down with all the rules being met. There are so many different uh, categories of rules and sets of rules that need to be applied when assignment takes place that it is practically impossible for any assignments that have been done in BC over the last while to have been, been done properly. But that doesn't mean that it isn't happening. I do believe that BC, as all housing markets, when they get at the peak of the market, when the euphoria takes over, a lot of crazy things goes on and Flipping or assignments are one of the, the telltale signs that a market has gone into a state of uh, euphoria and where people are doing things simply in the hopes of making more money. So shadow flipping is simply selling your a buyer, selling their agreement of purchase and sale to another buyer. And it's set in BC, uh, a lot of the times um, this is going on without the original owner of the home even being told about it. Well, the Globe and Mail article cited a home that sold for $2.4 million being sold a few weeks later for $6 million. If I was that original homeowner, I would be so angry, and I would wonder, how come I didn't get that extra $3.6 million? Well, you should be wondering, Jim, as should every one of your listeners, if they had sold their property and it was assigned. Because if they had called my firm, we would have given them instructions how to seek... Um, um, remediation on that uh, from the real estate agent, the real estate brokerage, the real estate council of British Columbia, and the civil courts. Because the case cited in that Globe and Mail interview, it was impossible for that to happen and all of the rules to have been followed. How do I explain that? Market value price. When the real estate agent originally listed that property for sale for those people, the original owners. And what was it, 2.3 million? Is that what it sold for, Jim? 2.4. 2.4 million. Okay, so, so when they originally valued that property, they have a legal requirement to do what's called market value assessment. That is the only price that a real estate agent can ever talk about. 
They can't talk about what the real value of the house is. They can't talk about what the future value of the house is. The only value they are licensed to talk about is market value. Now, market value in the case of a real estate market and certainly certain communities within a real estate market where there's lots of activity or there is known um, other assignments already under underway causes the market value price to be disclosed in such a manner that those what it could be worth if it was being assigned as its market value price. It is impossible to sell a property for two point four million, have it assigned even if it was assigned two or three times and have it subsequently sold at six million with the realtor at the on the very first time meeting their obligations on market value. So you know that that seller had recourse against the realtor. Worst case scenario, they would have paid no commission. In, they, uh, in all probability, they would have paid no commission. They would have sued for damages. Uh, a skilled lawyer in this area who received good counsel from someone like my firm in terms of uh, what the obligations are and what market value would be on the, that property, um, those damages would also be set. So the brokerage in question who, who were the listing, was the listing brokerage, they would also be on the hook. So what you're basically saying, Jim, is that the realtor and the brokerage would be bankrupt by a civil suit. What the real estate industry in BC does is they, like everything that they're, they've been doing in BC as, as we found, they keep these things quiet. They say, oh, no, no, it's okay. We can do assignments. Yes, you can do assignments. But you can only do them if you do them in the correct way. What is the correct way to do an assignment? I'm listing a property. I tell the owner what the market value is. If I know there's assignments going on in the neighborhood, I also give him a market value that could include what that assigned, assigned price may be. Then a fully informed seller and make up their mind what they want to list the property at. So in that case, if they wanted to list at 2.5 million, that's their choice. If they wanted to list at 6 million and find out what, ha what is happening, that is their choice. What I can tell you is a high quality real estate agent who was getting advice from someone like my firm, they would have had that listed for over $6 million to start out with. You can always come down in price, you can't go up. So that's what the situation is on in terms of assignments. So any of your listeners, who have, who have clients or they themselves were subject to finding out their home was subsequently assigned, they can drop me an email. I will give them a list of instructions to follow. They can call their lawyer, check out and find out if uh, what I'm saying is true or not. But I can tell you is it is virtually impossible for the realtor to do this in a legal uh, in a legal manner. Is this a case of really uh, closing the gate after the horse has left the barn? Yes. The, uh, so assignments are legal in Ontario. So for the 30 years that I was practicing as as a uh, real estate sales rep, uh, my, as my family practice, we always told our clients that were selling their houses that we would not accept an offer that included an assignment clause or where the offer had a standard obligation built into the contract that allowed an assignment to take place. That didn't mean that if the person who bought our house, our seller's uh, house, and then subsequently ran into real problems, i.e. they lost their job, they got a transfer, they had bought their own, they were buying this house um, without having their own sold, and then subsequently found out that the mortgage broker or the realtor had lied to them and that they couldn't get financing to carry two properties. Those, those sort of uh, things happen all the time. Well, in that, in that situation, you allow assignment to happen because what happens with the assignment is if there's any additional gain that's made, the original seller benefits from that gain, not someone else. Certainly, the real estate agents are not rewarded by getting a double commission or a triple commission, or participating in the flip themselves, which is an assignment, is flip is another term for an assignment, um, for them financially benefiting from it. If they do financially benefit, there are many other laws in terms of disclosure that the realtor has to make that means they would lose their real estate license. Now, whether the Real Estate Council of BC will pull someone's real estate license or not is up to the Real Estate Council of British Columbia. My personal belief is, and that of my firm, and that as I was practicing in the business, I think anyone who participates in this 
deserves to have their license pulled. I do not think they should be any way allowed to continue to sell real estate under any circumstance. This is not a person who should be involved with people's single largest investment in their lifetime. We'll have more with Ross K. right after the break. Unbelievable harmony, spectacular performance, the ultimate tribute to the Everly Brothers and Simon and Garfunkel. Bird Dog and the Vintage Electric Band coming to Fort Langley, Mission, White Rock, West Vancouver. Buy online and save at ontourtickets.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ross K. Ross, of course, in B.C., people have received their property assessments for property taxes this year. Are we paying too much tax? Well, I can tell you, Jim, 1.2 million homeowners in British Columbia have been over-assessed on their property tax assessments this year from the uh, provincial government. Um, we reviewed the uh, this year's allotment of uh, assessment changes. We reviewed the documentation uh, issued on this topic by uh, the BC uh, uh, property assessment uh, uh, issuers. And uh, I'm going to re- relate this information to you in, in a way that can be vetted by your listeners. If you own a home today that is over eight years old in British Columbia, where you have not spent 15% of the value on your home renovating it in the last five years, you need to apply for a reassessment on your property tax. That equates to 1.2 million homeowners in British Columbia need to apply. Now there are uh, almost 2 million properties on the BC uh, property assessment tax roll. So it's 1,996,112, which is an increase of 1.06 properties from last year. Of those properties, 87.7% 87.7% 87.7% are classified with some form of residential zoning. That those people, which is about 100 uh, 1,750,000, uh they are they they have been had their properties valued at over 1 trillion dollars. 1 trillion. If that was true, then the rest of Canada would only be worth to around uh, 2.5 trillion based on how Statistics Canada, the government of Canada, every other property assessment corporation does things. If that was true, that's what it would mean. So in, so in other words, all of Ontario could not be worse double what, uh, what British Columbia. It makes no common sense. If you do the breakdown on your British Columbia property assessment and, and, and people can get out their calculator they can do it themselves. What you need to do is read the facts on BC property assessment, page four of the release. So it's Greater uh, Vancouver 2016 uh, Roll News Release. Google it and it, you can pull up the PDF. On page four, all the numbers are there. When you filter through the numbers, you'll see that 20.36 billion of new development and construction has been added, and you need to subtract that from the total. Uh, the total that they have. Then you take 87.7% of the properties are classified and you see the number is 1.018 trillion. You divide 1.018 trillion by 1,750,590 residential homes. That comes out to $581,645 per unit. So the BC property assessment has said the average value of a British Columbia home is $581,645. What was the average selling price market value in July of 2015, which the BC property assessment claims to relate? It was $584,000. What you see, Jim, is that BC, like any other province that uses property at market value assessments, simply mirrors the change in the average selling price. They have made no adjustment for the shift in sales in the province of British Columbia towards Vancouver and towards those multi-million dollar homes that are being flipped. They have made no adjustment for that. If they did make an adjustment, it would be impossible for the number to equal what the average selling price was at that time, July 2015. Where everybody gets fooled is, what, how, what was market value on July of uh, 2015. It was actually from sales that took place back in uh, April and May, March, April and May. Those closed in July 
and registered it to the, mar the new market value prices for the, the assessment court. So when you go back and check what was the average selling price in BC at that time, it was 584000 581000 is your average. Since the average selling price in British Columbia equates to a seven-year home that is a quality of a new home that is seven years old. That's what the that's what they're selling at right now. If your home doesn't meet that standard, your property your property assessment is too much because you got to remember the assessment goes up with the market. They don't they make it sound as if they do individual assessments for all uh, one million seven hundred and fifty thousand uh, homeowners. They want it to. They want you to believe that's what's happening. It only makes common sense to any child in kindergarten that you would need a massive staff employing thousands of people to be able to do that each year. Well, that staff does not exist, which is why property assessments are done on a, a judgmental basis. In other words, my property sold, it goes up. There, therefore, my the two neighbors who live next door to me, their houses go up with the same value as does the rest of the houses in my neighborhood. You live in a condo building, two condos sell for 10% more. The value of all the condos in that building goes up 10%. That's how property assessment taxes, uh, property uh, assessments are, are, are done. Uh, they don't go in and say, well, Joe over at that house over there, he, his roof is uh, 12 years old. He's going to need to put a new roof on. And this one that just sold, that was a brand new roof. The one that just sold has a pool in the backyard. The one that just sold has a brand new furnace. The one that just sold has a brand new kitchen. The one that just sold had the bathrooms all updated. So even though Joe's house is 15 years old, we're still going to charge Joe the same increase in value. So unless you can support that, that every house, all of the houses have gone up equally, property assessments do not work. When you see the numbers align, in other words, when you see when you break down their numbers and you find that it's $581,645 is what the BC has assessed the average home at and the average selling price was $584,000, you know that's a red flag that you should be in and applying for a property uh, assessment uh, reevaluation. Is it expensive to get a revaluation? Um, it, it, it's not really expensive. Uh, th there, there's ways of doing it. So, you know... In the next section here, I hope we get a chance to talk about uh, the Wealthy Homeowner uh, Program. So people who are enrolled in the Wealthy Homeowner Program, they are coached on how they should be handling property taxes. How you handle property taxes are is that you do have to be an active homeowner. So what that means in BC, it means somewhere around April, May, March, April, May, each year, you go on realtor.ca and you write down what your neighbors have their their addresses, what they've got their houses listed for, and ideally you do a copy-paste or a print and you save a copy of those listings. Because then the following January, when your new property assessment comes out, you look at what it's increased and you can figure out whether your house should be going up as much in value as the ones that were listed for sale. Because um, in British Columbia, about 78% of the homes do not represent what's being sold on the MLS. There's about 78% of the homes that need renovations, upgrades, maintenance, new furnaces, roofs, driveways, um, exteriors redone, their kitchens are old, uh, the carpets are worn out, um, all the plethora of things that go into today's, the way homes are sold today. You know, everybody's heard about home staging, where someone comes in and they make sure everything's done in the house. Certainly a realtor today is not going to tell you to put a, a house on the market that has a 15-year-old furnace or one that has an outdated electrical system or one that has brown walls or one that has blue carpet. They're going to tell you what changes to make. And if you do a curse review of realtor.ca at any moment in time, you'll see that the houses that are for sale on realtor.ca almost universally have all been staged. They've all been updated. Uh, they've been placed on the market in the very best condition possible in order to get the highest dollar possible. But the neighbors' houses are not like that, and they won't be like that until they put their own, own home in the market. So, so in terms of fog tracking, should I be, should I be uh, making a claim against my property assessment for 78% of the owners in British Columbia? Yes. Now, if you step back for a moment, Jim, you only, they're only, the BCE residents, Homeowners will only have to do this once. We've got uh, 
1,750,000 homeowners in, uh, in British Columbia. So let's say that 50% of them are complaining. Now you're looking at nine, about 900,000 uh, property assessment reevaluation. It would flood. It would it would deadlock the B, BC property assessment uh, division. They, they would. There is no way that they could handle those, that number of complaints. They simply do not have the staff. So that would force your uh, assessment um, process, the methodology that they use, which is flawed, which is based on this theoretical average selling price. They can argue whatever they want. They can break it down whatever they want. Universally, every single government in Canada uses average selling price. They may argue otherwise. I can prove that they do because I have the intelligence, meaning market intelligence, to prove what I'm saying is true. So yes, for the marginal cost, you should make the claim because you got to remember, once you get get your property um, assessment adjust, it's not just that one year that you save. It's every year going forward you save. Arguably, it also makes your home more saleable. Obviously, if um, you save $500 a year on taxes, your home is $500 a year cheaper to own. The Canadian government is saying, the banks are saying, the average Canadian homeowner could not afford an extra $200 a month. So $500 is two and a half months worth of increase. So when you're when when houses are selling for the prices that they're selling, when a market is at its peak, this euphoria is ongoing, then yes, get your butt in, get your assessment redone, and if you need advice, get out and find it because it's very affordable to get a hold of. Ross, thank you very much for pointing that out. I think a lot of people are going to be scrambling to get their assessment reexamined because as you said, you don't just save money today, you save money forever. Yeah, and it's a compounding effect, Jim. You know, if, if my property, ta- if my assessment goes up uh, uh, 10% this year, so they say the average assessment this year, I think with it an increase, um, the total real estate rule increased by 11%, but you've got to take the offset. So when you, when you, when you break it down, it's, it's around, uh, I think it's around uh, 8%, 8, 8.9%, something like that. Um, that's this year. It goes up again next year. It goes up again next year. And it's a compounding effect where the, where the government, um, relies upon is they rely upon this, a myth that has been, been ongoing for years that, oh, don't worry about what your assessment is. Uh, we use a mill rate. So even though your assessment's going up, because everybody's assessment is going up, we'll reduce the mill rate so you're still paying the same tax. BS. As we're seeing in BC right now, everybody's taxes went up with the average selling price increased. But 77% of the properties, that should not have happened for. Ross, thanks a lot for chatting with us. No problem. My guest has been Ross K. from Ross K. Realty Consultants. His website's rosskay.com and rosskay.ca. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at Talk Digital Net. Our popular YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Comments about the show or questions for Ross can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com Radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.